Yo, what's up y'all? Welcome back to another Roblox Studio video where today I'll be showing you how to make a map voting system just like the one I have in my game right here. If you like this video, please make sure to leave a like. Thank y'all so much for 150 subscribers. I have a lot more tutorials planned in the near future and I really hope I can help y'all learn with me and bring y'all one step closer to becoming legitimate Roblox developers. But anyways, here in studio, we're going to begin by going into server script service and inserting in a new module script. And I'm going to call it map voting. And then in replicated storage, I'm going to insert in a new folder and call it maps. And I'm going to duplicate this folder and make a folder called votes and a folder called events. And then also in replicated storage, I'm gonna insert in a new integer value and I'm gonna call it map vote timer. And then in the events folder, I'm gonna insert in a new remote event and I'm gonna call it map vote began. And now with all of that, in our module script, we can begin by getting our services. So local replicated storage equals game get service replicated storage. And then we can get our information. Local maps equals replicated storage find first child maps. Local votes equals replicated storage find first child votes. Local timer equals replicated storage find first child map vote timer. Local events equals replicated storage, find first child events. Local map vote began equals events, find first child, map vote began. And now we can start on our actual map vote function. So we can do function module, create map vote and insert timer, which will be our time in seconds for the map countdown. And to start, we need to check if there are any map votes from our previous round. So we can do for underscore vote in pairs, votes get children do. So if this fires, that means that there are currently votes. So we need to destroy that vote. So vote equals destroy. And then we need to choose three random maps out of the map folder to vote for. So for me, since I don't have any maps, I'm going to go into the maps folder and insert in a new folder. I'm going to call it map one, and then I'm going to duplicate it and call it map two, and then map three, and then map four. So we can make a local selection table, which will be maps get children. So this will create a new table of every map. And then for index equals one to three do, we will choose a random map. And to do this, we'll first get a chosen number, which will be math.random one through the number of selection table. And to get our chosen map, we'll get selection table bracket chosen number. It'll get the chosen number instance out of the table and make that our chosen map. And then we need to remove that map from the selection table. So we'll do table dot remove selection table chosen number. So that's going to remove the chosen map out of the table. And then in our votes, we need to insert in a new vote folder. So we'll do local vote folder equals instance dot new folder in the votes and vote folder dot name is going to be the same name as the chosen map. And then after this, we need to set a countdown. We can set the timers value to the timer that we set earlier. And then we need to tell the players that the map voting has begun so they can actually vote. So we'll fire all clients on the map vote began event. And then we need to tick down our countdown so we can make a repeat until loop and repeat task dot wait one timer dot value minus equals one. 
we can do this until timer.value equals zero. And then after this, our timer is going to be finished. So we will need to count our map votes. So we can get our local chosen map and our highest number, which will set equal to zero. And then for underscore map in pairs, votes get children due. So for every map that we could vote for, if the number of children under that map is greater than the highest number, or if they have more votes than the highest number, then it will set the chosen map equal to that map and it will change the highest number to the amount of votes that that map has. And then if no map is chosen, we'll need to choose a random map. So we can say if not chosen map then chosen map equals votes get children bracket math.random one through the number of votes get children so that will choose a random map out of the three potential vote candidates and then we're going to return our chosen map to the script by finding the chosen map in the maps folder and then returning it and then we're going to go into server script service insert in a new script and we're going to call it map vote handler and this is going to handle sending the map votes into the server so we can start by getting our services local replicated storage equals game get service replicated storage local marketplace service equals game get service marketplace service and this is going to be for our vip game pass so we can also get our information Local events equals replicated storage, find first child events. Local map vote event equals events, find first child map vote. And since we don't have a map vote event yet, we'll go to our events folder and clone map vote began. And we're just going to remove the began, so now it's map vote. And then we'll get local votes equals replicated storage, find first child votes. And then we're going to get local game pass ID, which I'm going to set as one, two, three, but you'll need to change this to whatever you want your game pass to be. And then we'll get our function map vote event dot on server event connect function and we'll get our player in their vote. And first we're going to give VIP players two times votes, but we're going to set local vote amount equal to one. And then if marketplace service user owns game pass async, then we're going to get the player's user ID and check if they own the game pass ID. So if they own it, then we'll set the vote amount equal to two. And now we're going to need to check all the votes folder to see if the player is already voted. So we'll do for underscore map in pairs votes get children due. For underscore vote in pairs map get children do if vote dot value equals equals players dot user ID then if the votes value equals the players user ID then we're going to destroy it and now we're going to actually add in the votes for the player so we're going to first find the vote counterpart which is going to be the vote folder that they're going to vote for so we're going to get votes find first child vote and then for index equals one through the vote amount due so for every vote that they're going to add we're going to insert a new vote which will be instance.new integer value into the vote counterpart vote.name is going to be vote Gotta fix that. And then vote.value equals player.userid. And now we're gonna go into server script service and insert in a new script that we're gonna call round handler. And this is just gonna be a base round script. You can use your own round script, it'll plug in just fine. So first we'll get our services. Local server scripts is game get service, server script service. And then we'll get our information. Local map module is require server scripts, find first child map voting. And this will load the module into our script. 
And now I'll just add in a little weight just to test. But if this is an actual round system, you won't need this because you'll be waiting for players and whatnot. And then for our round, I'm going to create a while true do loop. And the first thing I'm going to do is print starting round. And I'll get our chosen map, which is going to be map module, create map vote. And I'll just put in 30 for our timer. And this will handle the entire map vote. So by the time we get it back, the map voting is going to be done. So I'll go ahead and print chosen map dot name has won the vote just to tell us. And then I'll clone the map into workspace. So local clone map is chosen map clone clone map dot parent equals workspace. Clone map dot name equals map. And then I'm going to play out the round and just delete it right after. So task.wait30 and then clone map destroy. And then just for testing, I'll go ahead and add an intermission. So I'll do task.wait5 and just call that the intermission. And now that we're done with all the server side scripts, I'm going to go ahead and load in my map voting UI from my other game and show y'all how I have it set up. So it's a pretty basic UI. There's not that much to it. But I have one main frame called map voting. And then under that, I have a frame called display. And then under that, I have three maps where I have a map name and a vote counter and a click handler. And then the map voting frame itself, I have a text label for the timer that'll automatically update as the timer goes. But to start with the client, I'll go ahead and insert a new local script directly into the display frame and call it display handler. And then this script, we're starting with something new. We're going right into getting the services. So local replicated storage equals game get service replicated storage. And then for our info, we'll get our main UI, which is script find first ancestor map voting. And we'll get our display UI, which is just main UI dot display. And then we'll get our local timer text label, which is main UI find first child timer. We'll get our events folder, which is replicated storage find first child events. And we'll get our map vote began event, which is events find first child map vote began. We'll also get our timer, which is replicated storage find first child map vote timer. And we'll get our votes, which is replicated storage find first child votes. And then we'll need to see every time the server calls to the client. So we'll do map vote began the on client event connect function. And we'll need to first update our displays. So for index, vote in pairs, votes get children do. Local counter display equals display UI, find first child map, dot dot index. And you'll see I named my frames map one, map two, and map three. So it can be map dot dot one, map dot dot two. And it'll just go right into the frames. And I'll start by getting the counter display and changing map name dot text to vote dot name. And I'll change counter display dot votes dot text to zero. And this will just go ahead and reset the UI and change all the maps to the name of the map. And then just like in the intro, we'll go ahead and tween the UI into frames so it slides. So we'll first set main UI dot position to UDM2 dot new 0.50 1.50. And we'll set our main UI dot visible to be true. And then to actually slide the UI, we'll go ahead and do main UI tween position, UDM2.new 0 0.50, 0 0.50. So I'll be in the middle. We'll set our easing direction to in out. And we'll set our easing style to sign. And we'll set our time to 1.5. So the sine wave means that it's going to go slow and then speed up. And then as it reaches the end, it's going to slow down again.
And then we're gonna wait out our timer. So we'll repeat task.wait until the timer's value equals zero. And then we're gonna tween the UI back out of frame. So we're gonna copy the same thing, but we're gonna change the Y value to 1.5 instead of 0.5. And then we're going to wait the tween out again. And then we'll set our main UI dot visible equal to false. And now to actually send in our votes, we'll go over to our click handler and insert in a new local script. And I'm going to call it vote handler. We'll start by getting our services. Local replicated storage is game get service replicated storage. And then we'll get our info, local display UI is script.parent.parent, local vote text label equals display UI find for child votes, local map text label is display UI find for child map name, local events is replicated storage find for child events, local map vote event is events find for child map vote. Local votes is replicated storage, find for child votes. And then we're going to make a few functions. So first we're going to update our vote count. So local function vote update. Local map name is going to be map text label dot text. So this is going to be the name of our map. And then we're going to use that to get our counter map, which is going to be votes find for child map name. So it's going to look for the map in the votes. We're going to see if there is a counter map, then we're going to change vote text label dot text to be the number of votes that that map has. And if there's not a counter map, we're going to set it to zero just to make sure it doesn't glitch out. And we're going to send our vote into the server. So local function send vote. If I can spell. Local map name equals map text label dot text. And then we're gonna fire server on our map vote event with the map name. So we're gonna tell the server that we're voting for that map. We're gonna first get votes to send it added and connect our vote update to that. And then we're gonna get our script.parent.mouse button one click and connect send vote to that. So every time anything is added to the votes folder is gonna update the vote count. And then anytime the click handler is clicked, it's gonna send a vote into the server. And you wanna go ahead and make sure that you duplicate this vote handler script and place it into all three of your maps click handlers. And finally, we need to make our timer text label update. So we're gonna go into the timer text label and insert in a new local script. And I'm gonna call it timer handler. And in this script, we're gonna start by getting our services. So local replicated storage is game get service replicated storage. And then we're gonna get our information. Local timer is replicated storage, find first child map vote timer. Local timer text label is script.parent. And then we're gonna see every time the timer's changed, we're gonna connect a function to that. And we're gonna set the timer text label dot text to the timer dot value. So every time the value changes, it's gonna update the text. And now with that, we can go ahead and test our map voting system out. So in game, we see that after a few seconds, it starts the round. Our map voting UI slides to the center. We can click on any of the maps and it'll update the vote counter and remove all of our other votes. And skipping ahead, we can see that once the timer runs out, it chooses the map that we voted for and generates it. So I can check in workspace and see that it cloned the folder and called it map. If you had actual maps, it would clone the maps in and let you walk on it and stuff like that. But anyways, with that, our map voting system is complete. As always, all scripts will be in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching and I really hope to see y'all in the next one.